I begin to look and uh, I begin to think about this. I don't know if I have spoke on it before or not, but it don't really matter. Have you ever, have I ever spoken here on the the way to pray or how to pray or the positions of prayer and in the Word of God. But as I was sitting there in the study today and I thought to myself, Self, there is a way that seems right unto man. And there is a way that does seem right unto man. But is it right in the eyes of God? Are we doing, are we doing what is right when we come before the throne of God? Are we doing it right? And you know, the Bible gives, and I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more. But have you ever thought about, and I just want to look tonight just, just very quickly in Luke. In Luke chapter 11 and verse number, verses 1 through 4. It's in other places, but I just want to pick this for the sake of time tonight too. And I want to keep it short, but I want to keep it to the point where we can be brief. And I, I have got Scripture, yes, but you've got it too in your hand. You can write the, the references down or you've got them in your head. And they're easy to come by. If this man can understand it, anybody can. But in chapter 11 of the book of Luke, in verse number 1, I want you to think about five postures of prayer the posture, the positions, the postures, how to pray, how to come before the throne of God. And how, do you, how, did, how have we seen it? Uh, and holy men of God have approached Him. And it's, it's went down through the process of time. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, he being Christ the Holy God himself, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. And as John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, when you pray. Now God is talking back to them. My Bible is read here in color. Say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But then he goes on and he begins a little further and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go in unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. And he goes on with a parable. Hear this. Christ, the God of all, the Savior of our souls. And He is telling them exactly how to pray. But in Romans, and you don't have to turn there, I'm going to read one verse and that's in uh, Romans 10.1. And it says very simply, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayers to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now here Paul is praying. Here is a prayer going up. Now so you're going to find prayer all over the Bible. And you're going to find it over in the book of Kings, in First Kings, you don't have to turn there. But I'm going to tell you where to go. You can write it, write the reference point down. But in First Kings chapter eight and verse number twenty-two, it is. It was there in in that uh, portion of scripture, and I'm going to look there and I'm going to read just a little bit of what uh, uh, is happening here in chapter 8. Here's Solomon. Now listen to what he said. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And what happened? He began to pray. He prayed with his hands up. And he prayed till he had satisfied himself or exhausted himself before God and delivered all of his soul to God Almighty. And he had dedicated the temple there. And here he had, was giving his heart out. And people have been criticized over this nation as people praying with their hands up in the house of God. Holy rollers and all names and different names and different denominations and everything else because they're different. Well, what would they have called Solomon? What would they have called the wisest man that ever lived? What did God call him? God called him a man full of wisdom and love and power and the wisest man that ever lived. I cannot call God a liar, can you? But God called him. He stood before the altar to pray. And you can come back in the book of Mark and you can come back and you can look what the Word of God says here about prayer in chapter 11. In chapter 11 and verse number 25. And just, just listen to what the Word of God tells us here. He said, and when you stand praying, forgive. And if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. When you stand and you pray, when you stand and you, you pour out your heart unto God, 
and you do that that's needful, and you cry out to God, and you deliver everything that's in you. But let's go, let's go just a little bit further about the standing. Just a minute. I, I was, I was standing outside talking to you two guys, and this came to me. I was standing out there, and I was looking at our church. And I thought about Samson. He was standing between the col the columns. The first house I ever owned, God let me live in for a number of years. I built it with the help of God. And I built columns, big round columns, four of them in front of my house. And I told Gene when I put them up, I said, I want these columns to mean something. I want them to mean, they didn't mean nothing when I built them, when I put them in, because I wasn't exactly where I ought to be in. But after I got things straight between me and God, and got my family where they ought to be in, the columns meant something. But the thing about it was when Samson stood out there and he told that young man, lead me, lead me between the columns, lead me. And then he cried out to God, let me just have your power one more time. God, I just want it one more time. You know, God didn't save you but one time. God just done, he, he don't, he don't go back as the old saying is and lick his calf over. Hey, you may have to do a lot of licking over. You may have to go back to the altar. Go back and repent. Go back and get things straight. But, uh, standing, what about bowing down? What, what about bowing down? In Psalm 95 and verse number 6, you'll find where the Word of God tells us there, He says it's, it's real simple to do. And He said there, He said, Oh, let us worship and bow down, and let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. That, you know, when God made us, He made us just exactly like He wanted to make us. But bow down. Bow, uh, uh, bowing down is a play, it's humbling. We are admonished to, to worship when we bow. It shows a, a way of humbleness. And as I begin to, to look at this, and I found it in Genesis 24, 26, and Exodus 4, 31. And you know, when they brought Rachel and, uh, to, uh, meet, uh, uh, Isaac, and the thing about it was, when, when that, there was a time of worship, there was a time of bowing down. There's a time. And boy, I'll tell you right now, when, when Rachel come and, uh, and gathered around the, the trough and, and watered the camels and all, boy, they bowed down. There was a time. But we, we're losing that in America. We're losing that. What about kneeling? Kneeling before God. Kneeling. There's a difference in bowing and kneeling. Did you know that? Boy, big difference. You need to, I, boy, I had to check out. You know, I, I learned something. You know, I've been taught some things, but I have to learn sometimes the hard way. In Second Chronicles, in chapter 6 and verse number 13, 
I, uh, uh, it, it might be good that we look at this just a little. They were kneeling there, and uh, when I when I began to see this, and I began to really really reckon with this, and the thing become real in chapter eight of Second Chronicles, in or chapter six, I mean. In verse number 13, listen to what the Word of God says. It said, For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold and for five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court. Now, you know what it was for? Look here. He wanted to be above the people. He wanted them to see Him. He wanted them to recognize and know who God was. Boy, think about it. Now think about it. In the midst of the court and upon it, He stood. Oh, I'll tell you. Boy, was He a man. Oh, I'd love to just have been able to wipe the dust on his sho- off His shoes. Oh, and now listen. And he set it up in the midst of the court. And he stood, and up on it, he stood. He stood now. Notice what the Bible said. He got up there, and he stood up. Now high above everybody. That he said, and he kneeled down on his knees. A man like Solomon. Boy, I'll tell you, that'll bring tears to your eyes. Boy, I'll tell you, somebody that God said, wisest man that ever lived, he humbled himself, boy. He got down there and people this day and time, I ain't about. I ain't a getting on my knees before nobody. But he said he, he, uh, he kneeled down up on his knees before all the congregation the poor, the rich, or whatever. But he said, and listen, he spread forth his hands toward heaven. Now, boy, I'll tell you right now, what does Solomon do? Solomon wanted them to know the God he served. Boy, the God he served was worth worshiping. Boy, he had the power. Brother, he was one that he wasn't ashamed of. You you look at the size of that scaffold. Uh, boy, I've worked off a of scaffolding uh, a great portion of my life. Uh, boy, and I've had a bunch of them fall too. Uh, but the thing about it is uh, I've never had God to fail me. Uh, brother, the thing about it was uh, Solomon kneeled down on his knees to pray. Uh, you can go over in the book of Daniel uh, in Daniel 6. Sec- and ten, uh, and you'll find Daniel kneeled down uh, on his knees to pray. Uh, brother, he had opened that window toward Jerusalem, uh, and brother, he would, he would cry out to God. Uh, brother, why would he pray? Uh, because uh, that was his God. That was his uh, 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 town. Uh, that was where uh, his true love was that, uh, brother, his God was from Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem was his city. Uh, brother, the thing about it was uh, he wasn't ashamed of the God he served. And Jesus, uh, in Luke twenty-two forty-one, 41, uh, you'll find where Jesus kneeled down uh, and prayed in the garden. And brother, he prayed prayed, he kneeled down. And the thing about it was, he just fell right on down on his face, and he began to pray. And you'll also find this falling on your face to pray. People buried their faith in the book of Numbers, and I'm going to hurry right on through this. I'm going to have to. In First Chronicles, 
in chapter number 21 and verse 16, in Matthew 26 and verse 23, Numbers 16 and 22, and Joshua chapter 5 and verse number 14. I know y'all got all of that. But you can get the tape of the CD. The thing about it was Moses and Aaron fell on their faces to pray. But God told them, said, you need to kneel down and put your face down to pray. You need to call out. That, the thing was, brother, in Numbers 16, 22, God wanted them to realize who they were and who He was. Brother, sometimes we need to realize who God is. Amen. And where we're, God is the Creator. We're the creation. And the thing about, what about Joshua? Joshua was standing around there one night, and he was just walking around, maybe, maybe kicking, kicking dust. You know how we'll do sometimes. Well, yep, yeah, don't know what to do. Yep, yeah, we don't know. I got two pictures hanging in the hall of my house. They say they're me and Larry. I don't know. I'm pulling the wagon. We got a Holstein calf in it. And I look back out the back, and that's Larry. I say, hey, you pushing or pulling? What are you doing back there? Yeah, I got them pic that picture on the hall. Yeah, and I got another one hanging there. Back there, and uh, I forget what it says, something about, and we got another calf in a wagon. And they're about a big hanging on the wall. Yeah. And, but the thing about it is, Joshua was just kicking dirt. And Joshua and God just asked him, What are you doing here? What are you doing? He wasn't doing nothing. He was just. He was kicking dust, kicking dust. And Joshua, and in Joshua chapter 5 and verse number 14, Joshua needed, Joshua needed to get his act together. You know why? There's a whole big bunch of people depending on him. And they had to get on a cross. And they had to go. And they had to get to where they were going. And you know, when, when God sends you somewhere, you need to get to traveling. And Joshua wasn't traveling. Joshua wasn't doing much. But God had, God put him in charge of all of them people. In chapter 5 and in verse number 14, listen to what he says. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. And the thing about it was, and it came to pass that, that and God now asked him, asked him, asked him about it in verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Nay, but as the captain of the, Lord, the host of the Lord, am I now come? 
And Joshua fell on his face. Now, buddy, I'm going to tell you, if God walked up to me or either one of his hosts, Brother, I believe I'd call in a crawl in a grand, groundhog hole. Brother, I tell you, I'd be so ashamed. But he said that he fell on his face to the earth and did worship. Worship. Now, boy, I'll tell you, I did preach a message about worship some time back. And boy, I'll tell you, when you begin to worship, now I've tried that at the house. I'd get up there on the... Oh, if you want God to come down, you just get out by yourself somewhere. And boy, I'll tell you, you put your soul... And I'm sure not bragging. I'm complaining because I don't know how to worship God. But boy, I'll tell you, it sure does feel good. When the tears came down and the prayers go up, the power comes down. Oh, is God something else? But I want to close with just a few remarks from the last point. But the thing was, David and the elders of Israel fell on their face. And there's one other, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he fell on his face and he was praying but the last point I want to talk to you about was in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, verse number 7, chapter 7, and verse 18. 2 Samuel. Oh, I'll tell you, it was something. It was something. In 2 Samuel. I've got to find it along with you. Second Samuel in chapter seven. Chapter seven, verse number thirteen. Listen to what the word of God or verse eighteen I mean. Chapter seven, verse eighteen. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God, but thou hast spoken also of my servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner, O man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. God knows Mount Carmel. God knows every one of us, folks. And God knows why we're here tonight. David sat in the house of the Lord and he prayed. And boy, when he went in there, he said, God, you know me. You, t- you took me out of the shepherd's field and you just took me away from a flock and here you set me down and 
It's really incorrect to say that any one of these postures is to be preferred over the other. It's, it'd be wrong for me to say it. I think it'd be wrong for you to. The posture, uh, I just want, uh, like this, of the body is not the factor or the fact of the prayer. Your position is not the to affect the prayer. Right here is the prayer. Right here is the prayer, folks. Right here is where it comes from. It comes from your precious heart. It comes from down the, the attitude of the heart. The attitude down deep within is what concerns God. And God knows your heart. God knows exactly what you need before you ever asked Him. But you know what? He wants to talk to you. He wants you, he wants you to talk to him. And you know, when you, when you come and you start talking to the Lord, he can just say, hey, be quiet. That's one of my children. But no, he's got them all over the world coming in. And when they, when everybody coming in, you know, he can fine tune every one of them at one time. And, it just amazes me. He's got time for me, Wilma. He's got time for you. And the line is never busy. And David sat down. A little old shepherd boy. And I, you know, I can about see him. I don't want to rattle on, but you know, I can about see him with his old dirty clothes on sitting in the king's chair with stable litter all over him saying, God, I ain't got no business in this chair, but God, you put me here. Now, God, I got to go to the house and wash up and clean up because, boy, I got to look like something. I represent you. I represent you. I'm the king's son. Let's stand, Heavenly Father. And Almighty God, Lord, as I position myself, Lord, behind this holy desk, God, just a sinner saved by grace, God, just one washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, saved, Lord, waiting on the trumpet to sound. Lord, I just thank you for the privilege to stand. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that I can stand before these people and say, Lord God, I've been washed in the blood Lord, I've been washed, saved, Lord, and waiting for the trumpet to sound and waiting to go home. Lord, I pray, take care of our family. Lord, and just help us, Lord, and strengthen our church family. Now, Lord, go home with us. God, make each one restful over the night. Give them peace for their bodies, rest for their bodies, and peace for their soul, and God help them to have a wonderful day tomorrow. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.